Hey guys, it's Jeff. So thanks for checking out my video today. This one's going to be on an option for you to consider in an iron sight feature. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video, but before I start, I need to do the obligatory ask. Please like and subscribe, share with your friends, check me out on my other social media, link in the description below. Now let's get into the, into the topic of this conversation. So on the table before you, I have what are known commonly as backup iron sights, right? These are very common, a lot of people have seen these, a lot of manufacturers are putting out various versions of backup iron sights. Well, I just want to talk about these for a minute, and I'm not going to give a recommendation one way or another, but I do want to discuss if these are the right kind of thing for you and for your setup. Now, I'm always been, I've always been a big fan of having a backup to your primary. So whatever your primary is, you should have a backup, especially if you're using something like an AR-15 for home defense, for personal defense, for you know, go to war, uh, maybe, you know, the Russians decide to invade, you know, uh, California and you've got to, you've got to grab your weapon because it's your go to war weapon and it's time, right? The, the gloves are off and it's the, the, the fits hitting the shan and you've got to go, right? Your gun should have a backup to whatever it is you're using. So in this case, this is the IWI's IM-15, great gun. This is my go-to rifle. If I were ever to have to grab a rifle and go, this is one I would grab. Now, obviously you can see I have a, an optic on here. And if this optic were to fail, right? So the electronics go out in this optic and most, most optics these days have some sort of electronics associated with them. So if these electronics go out in this, well, what's my backup? Well, in this particular case, it's an etched reticle. So there's etching on the glass that allows me to continue to use this reticle in the event the electronics fail. Now, what happens if the optic fails? Say some, you know, a rock hits it or I drop it and it smashes and the optic's dead. Well, what am I gonna do then? Well, then I've got backup iron sights that are already co-witnessed and ready to go. So I don't have to worry about having two levels of backup redundancy in this rifle. I have three. Right. In my opinion, I have three on this rifle. So that is for my rifle, my choice of what I want to do for an optic system. Now, not everybody uses an optic that has a etched reticle. You know, if you're running a red dot, maybe with a magnifier, you have considered that philosophy of having some sort of a backup and you are considering iron sights. Well, you've probably stumbled across these inadvertently, whether you wanted to or not. These are all over Amazon. You can find them everywhere. They're very inexpensive. And if you're interested in something like this, I'll have a link in the description below and you can go check them out for yourself. The price is not that bad. Now, do you want something like this on your go-to war weapon or your personal defense weapon or your self-defense weapon? Well, that's your decision. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to make a decision for you. I'm here to just give you this product description and you can make a determination on your own. I think these have value. I think they're an important uh, accessory for some rifles. Um, but I think if you're going to depend your life on it, I think you might want to consider a little bit more of an investment. Now, that's not to say that more expensive equals better, or that's not to say that cheap doesn't mean good. Um, and, and I brought a, a sample of that out on the table here. This, this is my Palmetto State Armory PA-15. Now, this has been a fine rifle. In fact, I was thinking about it while I was uh, prepping this, this video, back in after the Brady ban in 2004, an AR-15 of any manufacturer at all would cost you over $1,000. Well, these are now significantly less than that, probably two thirds of that cost. And you're getting, I think, in my opinion, you're getting a better rifle. Uh, manufacturing costs have decreased, the cost of materials have decreased, the availability has increased, and that's driven prices down. And so we as the customers all benefit from that uh, exercise in economics, right? So now you get a decent battle rifle or a decent rifle that you could use for 
battle or you could use it for hunting or whatever the case may be. The PA-15 is not a bad rifle and the price that you pay for it, you're getting a lot of value for that dollar. Now, back to the sights. So you've got your rifle, you've got your go to war rifle, you've got your personal defense rifle, you use it for your business, you use it for uh, your life safety, whatever the case may be, do you want sights like these? Well, again, you decide. All I'm saying is, is whatever you set up on your rifle, you should be prepared for that equipment to durable enough to withstand heavy abuse. Now, let's talk about these, right? So these are very expensive. Like I said, link in the description below if you're interested. There, this is a aluminum steel hybrid. So there are steel components like the, the sight post here, uh, the hinge is steel, the lever is steel, the, the bolt is steel. The housing is all aluminum. So this is an aluminum steel hybrid. I'm sure it's to keep the cost and the manufacturing down, but also the weight. You have a flip aperture in the back of the optic. You do have pretty noticeable clicks on the, the rotating knob here. You do have a indicator there, or those vertic vertical indicators to determine your windage and your elevation is also adjustable on the front. So you're getting a backup sighting system that you may never ever use in your entire life. And if it's your battle rifle, if this is your self-defense rifle, is this something that you want to invest your money in or do you want to save a little bit more money and invest it in something else? I don't think there's a right answer. I don't think there's a wrong answer. Uh, I think these are perfectly adequate for the majority of people who will never, ever, ever take their optic off of their rifle and go to a backup uh, sighting system at all. With that said, they, have, they come in multiple variations. Obviously, they come in the traditional backup sighting system where they're easy to flip up. You know, there's a, a positive detent there, so they're easy to flip up. And so when you have them in the upright position and you're lining up your, your sights, and you have them in the upright position and you're lining up your sights, you should have no problem at all lining up your sights to be able to hit your target. They do lock in an upright position. They do lock upright. They're not, there's not any movement. Uh, there's no side to side movement on either one of these. These are very tight, very locked up, no lateral movement. Now they do rely on this little plunger system in order to, and hopefully I can get that in focus for you. They rely on this little plunger system to push in and return to the stowed position. If that's of interest to you, there you go. Um, that's one version. This is another version that they have. Now, obviously this is an off, this is a, uh, 45 degree offset sighting system. So you would mount this to the top of your rifle and you would press the button if you were to ever need to engage these and you could use them as a 45 degree offset sight in the same capacity that you would set up, set them up if they were on top of your rifle. Now these, in order to get them to stow, you have to push the button back in and stow them. They are spring loaded. So when you push them, they will flip up quickly. Unlike these, these are manual. You have to physically push them up. And then once they lock in, they're locked in. Um, they have other versions as well. They have some that have no lock whatsoever. They're just, there's just a detent in there and you can feel it as you go up. It locks in place, kind of like a slip joint knife. And then when you're done, you just flip it back down. Um, this is, this seems like it would be a little bit sturdier because it does have that locking mechanism that does lock it in the upright position. So you're not going to inadvertently knock it, throw it off a little bit, which is throw your shots off significantly. So this is does lock up nice and tight. It is pretty sturdy. And again, with these as well, when you go to throw these into use and you push that in, it does lock it and lock it in nice and tight. So, so these are adequate for the role that they were intended to serve, or they will allow you to line your sights up and put a projectile on a target at distance, right? That's what sights are there for. A lot, a lot of people rely on iron sights anymore. So this is one of those objects that is 
not used heavily. You know, a lot of people will invest a lot of money in an optic and they'll get an LPVO, a one to four, one to six, one to eight, one to 10, and they'll invest hundreds and hundreds of dollars, but never throw a backup optic onto their firearm. And so if that optic ever fails and it's not an etched reticle or they don't have any, you know, etchings or wire to, you know, align their target, then they basically turn their firearm into a best effort, uh, uh, projectile delivery device, right? So you should have a backup optic system in your optics for your firearm. I don't know what that is. If that's, you know, something like these, an inexpensive Amazon optic or Amazon uh, iron sighting system, um, if that's one option. Uh, if you want to go with a little bit more name brand, that's another option. If you rely on an etched reticle and you don't feel like you'll ever crack the glass on it or you'll ever damage it and that's the only optic you want to go with or you want to have, you know, a lot of guys nowadays are running multiple optics, right? They'll run their primary optic, but they'll also run an offset optic and they can set the two up for different ranges. You see that a lot in competition. I, I've set that up on several of my rifles as well. So that's an option as well. That's it for this video, guys. If you like this product and you want to know more about it and you have questions and you want to throw me a message, throw me a message in the comments section below. I, I follow the comments, I follow the questions, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. You can hit me up on my other social media pages, campsite link in the description. And uh, if you want to pick up a set of these, I'll have a link to them as well. You can also check out my other deals page in the other campsite link that I'll have in the description. So with that, guys, I'm going to end it here. If you like this video, if you like this kind of content, you want to continue to support this channel and tell YouTube that this is the kind of content you want to see on their platform, make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends. And with that, I'm going to say, stay safe, stay vigilant, stay active, stay in the fight, and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.